everyone, this is Anna from Koala Soap, and I asked my daughter Kaylin if she could pick out some colors for me for our soap today. And she picked out some interesting colors. Um, <laughs> Poppin' Pink, which looks like a neon pink to me. Um, orange mag Magma, also looks like an, a neon. And this one is Blue Lagoon, which is like a, I guess a bluish green. She's very good at decorating, so, and I'm not, so I'm going to trust these colors. Now, I usually do two colors when I do this method, and I, I mix it with, you know, half of it with Shea Butter Melt and Pour Soap Base and Clear Melt and Pour Soap Base. But because I have three colors, I have to do uh, six different mixtures here. Each of these cups, funnel cups, holds between two and a half to 2.6 ounces because we're going to be using this mold that we know uh, is about 21, 22 ounces. Um, it's not perfect. It may be a little bit more, a little bit less. So I know what I have here is about, let's see, about 15 ounces of soap approximately. Um, and so I'm going to have, to, I'm going to need another six ounces of shea butter melt and pour soap base once I get all of this done. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and melt these and then we're going to mix our micas with the alcohol, which I have here. When you're mixing micas, it doesn't matter if you're using the 70 or 90% when you're mixing micas with alcohol. What matters though with the alcohol for me is when you're trying to do layers, then that's when I get into the 90s. Um, and I also use uh, uh, um, hatch marks to make sure it adheres to the other layer, but we're not going to be doing that today. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to melt these down and we will be right back. Okay, I've heated all six up and the Shea Butter Melt and Pour base always takes a little bit longer to cool for the pour. So I'm going to go ahead and have these in front and then I have the uh, Clear Melt and Pour here and they're already developing a skin. One of the issues is so I have these little bath bomb cups, and I'm going to start doing my mica. Uh, one of the issues is when you have a, just a small amount of base, um, it it uh, heats up a lot faster. We have one other issue, which is going to be a fun one, um, and that is my uh, uh, infrared thermometer is either out of batteries or it's no longer working. I last used it about a year ago. So we mix the mica with the alcohol. And as always, what we do is we will go ahead and squirt that down. And then we're going to mix it and put it off to the side. And we're going to do this with all three colors until we are done. So I don't know if you can see all this. I have the doggies with classical music in my office, and I can just hear a commercial one on. So I'm going to pause this video so I can restart the music for them. So I have, they are resting again. I have piano music going on now back there. And we're going to do these. I like to do them together because I think you guys saw in one of my videos that I accidentally um, put... I, I just mixed it wrong, so I like to do them side by side now. Now we're going to do the neon pink, which is really colorful. I'll try to tone that down a little bit. And I'm going to trust Kaylin, because she's pretty good at the coloring. So we'll go ahead and we'll... I learned to squirt this alcohol by one of the subscribers, and it, it kind of pretty much gets all of the mica out. And then we're going to go ahead and mix these. Yeah, they're not so uh, dramatic, at least in the Shea Butter Melt and Pour. It is very dramatic in the Crystal Clear Melt and Pour. And I'm starting to get skins on everything. Okay, I've got one more color to mix. I'll put these off to the side. And let's get these two in here. This one does have a skin. They both do. And then what we're going to do is, I think she said, this is that orange, so let's see how that goes. Okay. 
Very pronounced in the crystal clear. Um, I think I've only done a three color one once, maybe twice before. And so we'll see how this turns out. That's our alcohol. Now, because my um, infrared thermometer is on the fritz, I've actually gotten to the point where I can feel when the soap gets thicker, I, I know it's okay, like especially now it's got so much skin, I do feel comfortable adding my scent. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, 7 cc's because we're going to be mixing about 22. So this is a 3 cc, so I'm just going to disperse it between all of these. I'm sorry, this is a love spell, by the way. Okay, so I, I did about one and a half on each of those, and then whatever is left after I do the calculation, we will add love spell if we need to. So what I'm going to do is I actually have a little bit of mica in here, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out, and I will be right back. So let's go ahead and pour the shea butter. And it's got a nice skin. I honestly think I'm just going to pour it all down at once because it's pretty cool. After you pour the alcohol of mica and the fragrance oil in, it really cools it down. And we're going to be smashing this up. I'll get my gloves on after this sets for a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll peel this up and then we'll just kind of throw it in there. That way we don't waste anything. And I always start around the edges. Now, in my older videos, I used to spray this with alcohol. And I think that was more out of habit for me. Yeah, see, it's not even going through the layer. It's pretty set. Um, it was more out of habit for me, mainly because um, I'm used to squirting alcohol between layers and all of that. You really don't need to here because you're going to be punching those bubbles out anyway once you form your ball. set for about 30 minutes and then oh there's some here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to whatever is left in in these funnel cups and I'm going to go ahead and you know peel it out and just kind of throw it in there and then we'll make the ball together so I will see you guys in a, probably about 30 minutes as this is setting okay see you soon I wanted to give a little shout out to Edna for submitting these soaps. These were submitted by her mother. Edna, I believe at the time of submission was nine, and it's, I'm sure she's like a year or two older at this time. So thank you for these submissions. The frosting look that you're seeing is uh, Sharon's uh, Rose's Soapery. She's doing the, the soap that we can do make frosting out of. So thank you, Edna, for these wonderful submissions. Okay, we're back. This is pretty much set. And I went ahead and started peeling these out so that you guys wouldn't have to watch me do that. Plus, I need one of these cups for our um, shea butter uh, melt and pour base. Um, this one I couldn't really get out that easily, so I'll just do what I can on that. That one's going to take some work. Here we go. Okay. 
So what you can do is you can just tear this apart if you want so you don't have like a big clump of it there. Now the issue that I'm going to have is I like to pour my shea butter once this is in a ball at a cooler temperature. I don't have a thermometer. Um, I'm going to stir it until I feel that it's thick enough so that's cooled down. The thing is I just don't want the, if you pour it too hot, so I'm not going to put any fragrance in it because I will be pouring it hotter than I poured these. I'm not putting any fragrance in it because it'll just probably, it might waste the fragrance. It might just burn it out. Um, what I'm going to end up doing is just, uh, just pouring it in there and if it's a little too hot then what's going to happen is it might muddy these colors a little bit. So I'm going to try really hard not to do that. I'm kind of, I want to say working and a little bit of a not a great start back but that's okay we'll get a new gun I'm just gonna get a new one because that other one you guys my channel is how old and that thing's been with me forever so I think it's I don't even know if it's a battery thing or if I if it's just kaput so we'll see so what I'm doing now is I'm breaking it up and I'm just gonna it's still a little soft in some places which is fine and that way when I put it into a ball, I can really mash it together here. And I always use this, this is a silicone, I think it's a silicone pastry dish or something, um, which I've had forever. I used to just do this on the silicone baking mats that you see underneath this, but it's flat and it can, it can go off the edge and at least this way it's contained. And it just made me feel a lot better. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of making sure that I'm tearing this apart is I'm going to take about <clears throat> maybe five ounces of shea butter melt and pour uh, soap base um, and I'm going to melt it down and then I'm going to I need to get a chopstick because I need to make holes in here so that we can get you can imagine there's a lot of air pockets in here I'm going to go ahead and do that so that I can make sure I can kind of get in the nooks and crannies as much as possible I don't really worry about it if I when I'm cutting the soap if there's some like holes in it because it, to me it looks a little rustic and I, I actually like the look and I don't know if you can see, it's not going to be level, which is great too. I don't like a flat, flat top. I like it to have some, something coming out from the top so it kind of breaks it up a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and melt down the shea butter. Okay, I have melted down five to five and a half ounces of shea butter melt and pour soap. And if you're wondering why I keep saying shea butter melt and pour soap, I've gotten several emails and um, messages and comments that I can't believe you're putting raw shea butter in your melt and pour soap and I'm not this is oh well here it is look this is crafters choice so it comes in different forms it kind of depends on when you order and who you order from premium shea butter melt and pour soap base so it's not raw shea butter it's actually melt and pour soap base it's kind of made for what we're doing now I went ahead and warmed this up and it's thick now and it's it started getting a little bit of a skin. So now I know it's safe to pour just because of the skin. When you don't have an infrared thermometer you just kind of have to make do with what you have. I do have our pink six cavity mold here in case I have any extra. I'm hoping I don't. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just start poking holes in this and then I'm going to pour slowly. Okay, so I need probably, I think about another two ounces. Um, because I could see it's right under the lip there, so I think I could get away with two more ounces of melt and pour. But what I'm going to do in the meantime is kind of make sure that this isn't a square. So I'm going to go ahead and melt down two more ounces. And okay, so I have two more ounces in there and it's thickened up a little bit. It had a little bit of a skin and I, I kind of want to pour it sooner than later. So here we go. I have unmolded the soap and this is what it looks like. It is, it kind of reminds me of like a carnival. Now one of the things that, that we need to know about the square mold, I, I want to show it to you, the one I just used for this, is it's, it's sides, it's, it's four by three and a half inches. So you need to make sure that you're, you get the, the four inch side, the longest side in, in the cutting this way, because that way you'll get four one inch bars equally. And you can hear the puppies in the background playing, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut and turn on the music because they get kind of loud and rambunctious. But I just wanted to let you know, make sure you have the long side here. And then I'm going to use my wave cutter, which isn't here. beautiful soaps I've ever made so it reminds me of a carnival and so that's what I think I'm gonna call it um, so I want to tell you what I'm gonna do off camera because it's going to be I, I'm not so uh, good at it sometimes I want to cut this side to match this and so basically what I do is I put it in here and I cut but I have to adjust this a little bit and you know you guys get the idea I just want to make sure it's wavy I think the wave cutter really brings a dimension I, I was never a fan of the wave cutter um, until I saw how it can just bring such dimension to a design and I've got to say I was a little skeptical when Kaylin gave me these three I asked her to pick two and she did she picked um, enough for um, I think three more videos, um, and I just, I, I was like skeptical, but I thought, you know what, let's just try it. I have to say, when we do this kind of design with more than two colors, so we have like six colors total, of light, lighter and darker, it really is something. Anyway, I really do like this soap. It smells wonderful. Again, I use, I don't have my glasses on, oh, I use Love Spell, um, and it smells great. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video, and sorry for the puppies in the background, but you know, you were warned. You guys have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. Bye.